So we decided that we would take a look at some records going as far back as 1775 to see just how effective Hot Shot was at setting things ablaze. So for your viewing pleasure today, we have been heating up consistently a pair of six pound solid iron shots and one three pound solid iron shot. And we will be dropping these things on a block of ice and a block of wood about the thickness of a schooner. It's got some tow and some debris on top of it to represent the initial impact from the ball to the ship. So we'll see how fast it can light this stuff on fire. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before I get into actually showing you what's going on, we need to talk about the record and what it says that these types of shot can do. So ordinarily, a 24 pound solid iron ball heated for 55 minutes could set something like this ablaze in three seconds. It can still light powder instantly up to about a half an hour after it is left to cool in the open air. That is what the record tells us. So that is pretty, pretty intense. We're ready for the first shot. So let's see if these records hold true, ladies and gentlemen. Now, for those of you in the front row here, especially in front of the uh, block of ice, I will warn you, this will be able to boil water, and ice is in fact made out of water. So we will be experiencing some splashing effect, ladies and gentlemen. So let's see what happens when this superheated iron ball is placed upon a block of ice. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we're not joking around. We just made this block of ice into something that you possibly could cook your pea stew ration in. This will continue to burn for a little, a little while here. So we will allow that to fall straight through the ice. The next ball that we will be using will be applying directly to the side of the ship here. Ah, perfect. How fast did you say that ball was? Well, these balls would usually be heated to about 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit, usually. Now, once more, the little inconsistency with this one is that it has only been left in the in the, this building for a couple of hours, and it is made out of steel. It is not solid iron this time, but <laughs> as you can see, you can even watch how the wetness disappears on the iron if you're or on the steel rather if you're close enough. And as a matter of fact. I hold in my hand a cartridge, a tube of loose powder. Let us see what happens, shall we? Now I warn you, this may or may not ignite. Aha! It is not igniting, ladies and gentlemen, but as you can see on the top there, it is changing color. So what this is telling me is that after being soaked in the ice, this particular size of ball will not be able to ignite powder after being soaked in ice for a straight minute. Thankfully for us, firing on Fort George, they don't have a block of ice, so we don't need to worry about that. Shot for, yep. So what happens when superheated iron is left on top of wood, tow, and debris. Instantly it starts smoking, and within a few minutes here, it should be completely up. Ah, completely ablaze. So now, ladies and gentlemen, if that wasn't magic trick enough, that's just the tow, that's just the debris. Once it hits the actual wood, it has been recorded that something like this would burn for six hours straight. Meaning that if you launch this into a wooden building, this would burn until there was no building anymore. 
Next shot. That will continue to burn throughout the rest of the experiment, ladies and gentlemen. But for right now, what we are going to try and do is test another part of the record. Namely, something that is dipped three times in water might still actually be able to set off powder. Let it go. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, dip three times in cold water will still ignite powder instantly. So what this tells me is that even if you are trying to put out a fire caused by some hot shots, you might get the flames. But the thing that caused the fire in the first place is still going to be able to reignite it. So that just goes to show you how deadly this sort of ammunition could be against wooden objects. You may try and you may try. And if that, which has been dunked in this water, is still able to ignite powder, just imagine what the untouched, unsoaked, piece of ammunition still burning through that wood will be able to do. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, once more before I turn it over to what we're actually going to be firing, I'd like you to remember that the, the, uh, gun, uh, the guns that we are firing at Fort George were firing balls that are about three times as large as these. They are made of solid iron instead of steel. So what this tells me as well is well, let's just say Fort George didn't stand a ghost of a chance being made out of wood and all. So what we're going to be using to fire these shots is much more represented by this gun over here, our cannon. And our lovely crew from the uh, United States 3rd Artillery will be taking control of this gun for you today. Now, I understand you've already seen an artillery demonstration, but let's remind you of what it takes to go through this. Yes, I'll turn it over to them. Good. 